Incoming email. What you want to know? Craig's <laughs> Corner. Hey, welcome to Craig's Corner for Friday, December 21st, 2012. Hooray, we survived the apocalypse. Ta-da! So all of you who are in your bunkers and can't see this right now, you should probably come out now. Okay. <laughs> all right, so today I wanted to talk a little bit about voice support. We've had more people recently having difficulty connecting their device to voice support via their Mac or their PC. Um, and of course, I think what's, uh, what's going on is that of course we're, we're offering all these updates and all these new presets and so we've got more and more and more people and more and more units out there um, that are trying to connect and so of course um, any kind of idiosyncrasy or, or any kind of uh, issue that, that happens, uh oh, I'm gonna sneeze, damn it. <laughs> Okay, I'm back. <laughs> so anyways, as I was saying, um, any kind of, uh, of sort of idiosyncrasy amongst the systems, um, you know, kind of crops up a little bit more when you've got many, many more users using the, uh, the product. So I wanted to try and address a couple of the sort of top things that can get in your way when you're trying to connect to voice support. The first one being, the unit doesn't connect at all to your computer. Can't see it in any way, shape, or form. That's sort of the, the absolute basic level of, okay, what's going on with the connection? How do we make this work better? Um, check your USB cable. You know, those, those cables that come in the box, every once in a while you get a, a bunk cable, just try another one. That's the first step. Um, second step being, if your device, and you'll have to check your manual on this, obviously, um, has MIDI control or USB control, you've got to make sure that you've configured the USB stuff and the MIDI stuff the way that voice support wants it to be configured. So you look in the support um, site for uh, for voice support, I'll put it at the bottom of the screen here, um, and check out the manual. And there's some settings in there, like uh, say for Voice Life 2, you know, be making sure USB control is on and that SysX ID is set to zero. Um, so in some of those more complex devices, there are some settings in there that could prevent you from connecting to the computer at all. The other thing is, it seems silly to quote the IT crowd, but have you tried turning it off and then on again? Totally seems silly, but in a lot of cases it actually works. Reboot your computer, um, turn on the device, connect the USB cable. Um, other times, reboot your computer, connect the USB cable, and then turn on your device. Sometimes it's a little bit finicky like that. Um, so those are sort of the, the very basic general, um, general sort of connection issues. And also, of course, um, the USB cannot power your device. So you have to have it plugged in via your wall wart, power supply, whatever's going on with your device. It has to be powered up. Okay, now for specific stuff. I'm going to cover Mac really quickly here. Um, the one that comes up most often for Mac, which is a really strange one, I have no idea why this works this way in OS X, but Macs are more sensitive to the order in which voice support and the device are connected and started. So what I mean by that is some computers will like you to start voice support first, then connect the USB cable with the powered up device for voice support to then see it. Other Macs want you to plug in the USB cable, turn on your device, and then fire up voice support. And we've actually seen like the same computer with the same OS, or I mean like, you know, two versions of the same model, so like two MacBook Airs or whatever it is, that um, that both want a different order. And it works, that order works every time, and the other order doesn't work. No idea why that is. Um, you can go and complain to Apple about that. <laughs> but they're so easy to use. Um, so. That's probably the biggest thing that comes up for Apple users. Uh, it just happens to be a bit finicky. For PCs and for Windows 7 specifically, um, the biggest one that comes up is your device being disabled by default when you connect it to your computer. So what happens is you connect your new device, it spends a couple seconds, you know, you'll see it loading the, the generic USB audio drivers, and then you go into your control panel, you go to voice support, and it just doesn't exist. There's nothing there. And uh, what happens is when Windows 7 sees a new device, a new audio device, it just disables it by default. So two things you might run into are it's disabled and you have to enable it, which means going into your control panel and then to your audio hardware and then there's a, you can find like a little playback and recording tab and in that playback and recording tab is where you see your devices. Um, I'll see if I can find a screenshot somewhere to, to throw up in this video and if not, um, the fact that I'll point you to will, will give you a bit sort of longer instructions. But essentially, you actually have to enable the device, right click it on enable it. The second hurdle to come overcome at some point there is sometimes that device is disabled but it's also not even showing up in that list and the trick with that one is you can right click inside that window and there'll be a little tick mark 
next to a box that says show disabled devices. If that's unticked, then that means that not only is the device disabled, but Windows has decided, ah, don't even bother showing them the disabled device because who would need to see a disabled device in order to enable it, right? Yeah, that would never happen. So if you can get over that little hump, often that will help you to connect to voice support. There are so many systems and so much hardware and I mean you can imagine just the, the, the sheer combinations of systems makes it really really difficult for us to give any kind of catch-all answer for this will solve your voice support connection issue but that's one of the major ones in Windows and of course the other one in Mac. The, the system independent one that comes up very often is voice support needs to connect to your device directly. It has to have exclusive control over the MIDI and the USB connection to your device because it's going to be sending a bunch of firmware and a bunch of complex stuff that has to really make sure it happens correctly. If you have a, a digital audio workstation, you have a DAW, Pro Tools, Logic, any of that kind of stuff, and it's up and running and it can grab a hold of the MIDI or the USB for your device, that will block voice support from uh, being able to connect. So that would be the situation where voice support sees the device, um, like it, it, you, when you go into manage devices and, and, or manage and you say show devices, and it shows up as saying, you know, say voice live touch, and it'll say either not a TCH device or um, not connected. And you're like, yeah, but it is connected. It's connected right to my computer. It means that something has gotten in the way and taken over control. Most of the time you can narrow that down to your DAW or uh, some sort of um, interface like a workstation interface. Um, you know a USB hub can sometimes get in the way um, so if you're not getting connection connection at all try different USB ports and of course the, the last try would be you know try another computer um, even if it just happens to be taking it to a buddy's house and you know using it on their computer just to see if it'll connect because if it won't connect to any computer at all you can kind of guess that maybe there's a setting within the unit itself that's preventing that connection or, or you know you haven't tried a different USB cable something like that if it can connect to multiple computers, but you're still getting the same issue with it not being able to be seen properly by voice support, then you're starting to lean towards more of the something is grabbing it, um, you know, that there's, there's, uh, there's some other issue on the computer system level that's getting in the way. So that'll give you a little bit of a sense of where to go. Um, of course, I can't give you these catch-all answers that are gonna solve everything, but hopefully that'll get you started. Um, here's a link to the FAQ right here. Um, there is a FAQ online that has a bunch of different steps you can try uh, before you, you get in touch with support to try and take it further. And to be honest, um, those steps are pretty much what support is going to take you through as well. So definitely try them first. Then you can head to things like voice council forums. There's lots of helpful people, including myself, on the forums um, to, to help out and give you uh, give you some, some other assistance to get going. Um, because I know it can be super frustrating. You know, you get a, a fun new update comes out or a bunch of presets and you can't connect and it's so annoying. So we really want to help you to try and uh, try and get connected. Connected. I will continue making voice support videos as, as many Craig's Corners as it takes for us to try and identify these new issues as they come up or to try and give um, uh, more users better a better chance of getting connected. I will just keep doing them. So take care and we will talk to you soon.